Good evening to you all, wherever you are, in whatever state uh, and in whatever district you are. It is a good evening from Church of Uganda Family TV. And uh, we are happy that we are here on this day, uh, the 7th of March, the year of the Lord, 2023. And we are pleased that we can be on air again trying to discuss a few things here and there. So tomorrow is a public holiday and uh, it is uh, the International Women's Day. And so the women uh, are going to be celebrating tomorrow. So some women are saying men have to be in the kitchen tomorrow. I don't know if that is the case in engineer's house tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with me today is, uh, is engineer Chivoka and I uh, will be discussing the great potential hidden in women. So that's what we'll be dealing with. Uh, but before we, we, we get to that, are you a Man U supporter? Uh, yes, of course, indeed. Oh. I, I can't deny that. But uh, uh, I still stand strong. The Lord is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> May the Lord comfort you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the words of His grace. <laughs> That's uh, great, great. My friend, seven goals is not a small one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just know every week, every ma Monday you have one. Well, the man was well on Saturday. <laughs> One man stated that uh, we, we went past Mukono, and, <laughs> but uh, that uh, the Lord is charged, and uh, we do believe one day, one time, we'll be on top of things. I have, I have, a, I have a relative who is a strange Man U fan, mm. and and uh, the entire office knows him as a Man U fan. Yes, my friend, accessing office was hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's on fire, and you know it was uh, it was a double tragedy for. Uh, People of uh, this massage cup from uh -huh. the, 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 the Bosi, no, is it Ch um, Budu? Uh -huh. uh, actually, um, when you were money, you support, and then Budu, and you were double kicked, it was a tragedy. I actually have one who, was, the, who, who was supporting Budu, <laughs> and then actually, later on went to. <laughs> one man died. You, you know, the moment uh, Bosiro scored, the man went off, and by the time they got in him into hospital, it was off. So he didn't get a chance to watch the man new. It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that is football. Football is not for the faint-hearted. Yes. If you're not a strong one, then you just need to stay away from ball. Because Very the true. ball. Uh, sometimes if you don't like losing, then you can easily find yourself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of your friends took the, the iron sheets of uh, the Karamajongs. And others say <laughs> they don't know how it got to their, how it got to their compounds. Yeah, you know. Uh, and then uh, one of the ministers was cited painting. And she's <laughs> <to> another. <laughs> you know, uh, in Uganda, everything is possible. And uh, this is a land of wonders. This is a land of uh, unthinkable things happening. And uh, the good thing we still have hope in the Lord. <laughs> but sometimes you, you lose words. You sometimes you become speechless. There is stealing from... Uh, if you steal from the Chibokas, you are safe. <laughs> <laughs> no, stealing, stealing has no boundary. Stealing is stealing. No, uh, I, I, I'm, no I'm trying to weigh the degree. I, I said this earlier. Stealing from the Chibokas is, is fair. But if you steal from the Karimojongs, then you are very poor. <laughs> <laughs> I leave it at that. It's, it's very challenging. Well, we are discussing the great potential hidden in women, uh, and and uh, you want to ask yourself, who are these women, and what potential do they have hidden in them? And so that's what we'll be discussing for today. And so, if you have a woman in your house, you have a girl child in your house, what potential do they have? And and when you get to know the potential they have, how best do you? improve what is already in there so that's what we'll be discussing today engineer say hello to our friends we started on a lighter <laughs> on a light bit but uh, it is not good manners to talk to people whom you have not greeted that's very true in my culture it's indeed very true uh, thank you emmanuel uh good evening viewers uh what a blessing to once again be together uh, on family tv and uh, i'm so grateful for the great women in this land and across. We are so, so grateful for what God has enabled you to do as mothers, 
as great women, as women of substance. Amid these challenges, because really there's a woman out there who is trying to do the best of her ability to add a brick or two for the development of her family, her nation, and the world at large. But of course, some are also heartbroken, like uh, my friend Emma here is broken uh, when he starts mentioning about the losses and all that. There are some women of substance out there who feel offended. But all in all, we still stand with hope. We can overcome some of these challenges. We can uplift those who have gone down. But still, um, that with this notwithstanding, we'll still see the potential in the great women who have really made us be who we are. Let me start from a weird end. Yes. When was that last point when you felt your wife was very helpful? Mm. Um, really, my wife has been helpful quite a teacher and every moment and step of my life. But uh, there came a time when the tragedy happened to me and she found herself at crossroad. Uh, she could not be herself, but she ran around to make sure that uh, I'm found and uh, the children were really, she provided the shoulder for all our children to lean on. You know, it's such a time when brokenness surrounds you, when too many questions come, when you feel isolated, but only prayer and standing firm can change things. I think there she did a good job, and uh, I cannot underestimate that. So um, whenever I look back, and imagine the situation. I see the great potential of what she did. Much as she's doing too many other things day in, day out, but that cannot be off my mind. Yeah. That's a huge one uh, out there. You must want to think that there are women mm -hmm. who can be a shoulder to a man. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, those kind of women are there. Yes. If you landed on one whom you think is useless, there's somebody who is celebrating his own wife mm. and, and he's saying, without this woman, I would be no more. Yeah. Without this woman, I would be a broke man. Without this woman, yeah. this family wouldn't go any further. Yeah. Let's start from the fam family basis. Yes. What r potential do, the, do women have to exploit within the family base? Um, well... Um Thank you, Emmanuel, once again, and viewers. Uh, women have gotten a great potential, and uh, this can be discovered right from uh, the time of we coming into existence. Because each one of us, Emma and the listener out there, or the viewer out there, we are all potential product of a, a woman. And those women are very strong, and they have done quite a lot of work. They have sacrificed a lot to make sure that we are who we are. And uh, if you have a mother, that mother must be celebrated. Before you move out to celebrate any other woman, the mother must be celebrated in each and every person's life. And to this, a mother, after giving birth, strives all the way day in, day out, to make sure that a child grows and well-fed, well-groomed, well-guided in each and every step of growth. Quite often fathers come into uh, uh, the limelight when a child is now standing, can, can talk. Can. In fact, I'll give you the very example of myself. I, I really feared to carry a baby. Whenever a baby crossing a baby to me, I thought this, this little one is breaking into pieces because very weak and until when the, 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 the baby gathered some things, I could feel that now I can carry a child. But no moment a mother has ever felt like uh, couldn't carry a child or anything. The mother is always there. Cry all the night, do this, change the pampas, do the other, do the other, or the nappies and everything. It was the mothers. And uh, that's why we do celebrate uh, women and more so 
starting with that very stage. Then we grow up. Because I'm one person who is fully convinced. And I believe any of you out there, Emma, if you never knew that this can really be important, that's the, 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 the starting point of uh, a potential of a woman. Every man, if I may say, Emma, how many women do a man, a, a rightful man, ha is supposed to have in life? What do you think? How many women? Why should it be women? I thought it is a woman. Oh, you thought it's a woman. Okay, fine. That's the answer. So your thinking is a woman. So uh, to me, any rightful man must have three women in life. And these are the three women, if I may say, whom we are celebrating today. The first woman in a man's life is his mother. It's that mother who gives birth to you. It's that mother who raises and grooms you into somebody. It's that mother who will bathe you and do everything to make sure that you grow and guides you up. Now, that's the first woman. When you grow and you reach a stage where the voice changes and the strength and the what, and you become somebody, that mother shifts the responsibility of whatever she was doing into the hands of another woman. Now you are getting a second woman in your life. And the second woman in your life is your wife. Because your wife now is in a position to do everything that your mother was doing. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That woman, the second woman in your life who is your wife, is able to do everything that the mother was supposed to do. But now she can no longer do. That's why now you're having a second woman in your life. Now here comes the third woman in your life. The third woman in a man's life is his mother-in-law. So it's that great woman who gives birth to this lady or young girl and he grooms that young girl rightly in the right direction knowing that he's preparing her to take care of somebody's son in life. And eventually Emma meets that lady and takes charge of Emma and takes care of Emma. So those three women are very important in a man's life. And a man who does not celebrate those three women has a problem in his head. <laughs> Emma is right now convinced that that's the way to go. So no, those that, are the women. That, that is the truth. That's the truth. Why wouldn't you celebrate your mother? Exactly. Uh, why wouldn't you celebrate your wife? Yes. Except the the wives that these other human beings are starting to coil up. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's madness. Uh, uh, why why wouldn't you celebrate your mother-in-law? Exactly. That means you don't. If you, if you don't, then you don't have exactly a heart that appreciates. So at a family level, those are the three great women. Any man must celebrate. You know, why I say any man, we are celebrating the International Women's Day. We are celebrating women. I cannot bring in a man. We are celebrating women. So, we men, we are celebrating women. And we start with celebrating our mothers. We go on to celebrate our wives. We go on to celebrate our mothers-in-law. Because they are the ones who have made us be who we are. So, at a family level, that's how a rightful man is supposed to celebrate. So, could we look at the potential mm. that that women mm. have at yes. a family level? Okay. There could be more than one. Mm. If you give birth to mm. a few girls here and there, mm. and they grow up in that household, they definitely become women in that house. Mm. Though at some point others may exit into marriage. Mm. What potential can they exploit to better families, to better themselves, and to even better their own siblings? Yeah, thank you, Emmanuel and viewers. Uh, this is quite very great. Um, women have got a lot of potential, as you said, even these young ladies, if they are well-groomed and well-guided, they have equal, equally the right potential as men do have. We've seen uh, girls who have been groomed and nurtured well, well educated and they have stood firm to protect the families, to guide the growth of their siblings, to be in the lives of their parents, to be in the lives of family investments. So there's a great potential if they are well organized. I'll give you an example of uh, one, uh, one lady who is very great and we really appreciate her in the business world. She's um, Miss um, Babula Murwana. Babula Murwana is a daughter of the late Dr. Murwana. The, 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 
the MD or the founder of a nice uh, group of companies or Murwana group of companies. Actually, she told me she prefers calling their investment Murwana group of companies, which involves uh, the nice and all the other batteries and what, but uh, the right name is Murwana group of companies. Murwana group of companies is led by Barbara Murwana. Madame Barbara Murwana was born like any other girl in the family or any other child in the family, and she grew up as a child. But in the, in the line of growth, she was grown, she was educated, she was uh, mentored. Of course, there were boys also uh, within the family and other girls, but she was guided well, and now she has become a peer of running the family investment. So that's a very great potential from a girl. So if a girl is also well groomed, there's a lot of potential that they can bring up to better the family, to better the, the community, to better the nation, and to better the world. Because as far as I know, if I, I still continue with the, the example of uh, Murana Group, uh, you cross, in fact, lo look around the, the local ground. Almost each, each and every household has got a product from Murana Group of companies. When you move to the neighboring countries, go to Kenya, go to Rwanda, go, go to Congo, go to Southern Sudan, all these products are there. That's benefiting the world. So exactly a lot of potential is in there in our girls, in our women, if they are given a chance and they are well protected and they are properly guided, a lot of potential is with them. And they can do quite a lot in their families and uh, beyond the families. That's how uh, some women have made it up there. Yes. You want to interest yourself about how many ministers hmm. are female in the current government? Hmm. Uh, could they be more than the one for men? Um, uh, currently, currently, uh, at this regime, actually, I, I might not have current affairs in terms of their numbers, the tip hands, but currently the number has increased potentially. And uh, when you see that uh, the leader of government business is a lady, uh, really uh, get to speak of parliament, a lady, th there are quite a number of them, and uh, of course a number of uh, women, they are there. And uh, uh, they, are, they are doing quite a lot of work. Does that suggest that the appointing authorities seeing uh, better outcome in the service done by women compared to men. Let's take a look. Uh, Yun Rai is, mm. uh, is uh, uh, Kajina, mm. and, and she was here this morning. Mm. Uh, KCC initially was who? Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Mosisi. And now is? Uh, Chisaka Dorothy or something. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. Uh, uh, IGG. Yeah, Madame um, Betty Kamia. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, uh, the leader of government's leader business. Of government business. Uh, then speak of parliament. Uh -huh. uh, then um, uh, there's uh, National Council for Higher Education. Uh -huh. uh, Professor uh, Mary Okakwal. Uh -huh. uh, also women. Uh, I think a number of them can be counted. These are strong women and yeah. they are doing a lot of work. And, and actually, if, if you're very careful, you mm. want to realize that some of these entities that are led by women mm. tend to produce tangible, visible fruit. Exactly. Why is it so compared to the male counterparts? Uh, well, I think partly, um, you know, women... Uh, the potential in women, uh, quite a number of years was not uh, uplifted, wasn't so high, more so in our land. And we used to think that uh, men are many numbers, men are highly educated, and men were covering almost everything. And not only here, but all around the globe, that's how it used to be. And uh, th there's a lot of potential hidden in women, which were not identified. And uh, quite often people thought that women are supposed to be in the kitchen, when they are supposed to do housework and all that. But uh, right now, the potential in women was basically based on their ability to handle things with the seriousness and the softness at some at some level because the aggressiveness in women in men was quite high but women intelligently and with the calmness they have been able to handle quite a number of things and the women are the kind of people if they are placed somewhere and they are doing something they'll move uh, you know with that kind of calmness which is not compared to men in rare cases, you find a man speaking like uh, uh, he owns the kingdom of somewhere and, you know, 
But women in coolness. I'll give you an example. Uh, this lady, uh, sometimes I call her mother. She's rather being a mother. Uh, Madame Professor Mary Okakwal, the, 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 the ED for um, National Council for Higher Education. She's a, a professor, a high-profile lady, but quite down to earth. This is a lady who delays a minute if you had a meeting or something, and she calls you to apologize. And you say, but this is a very high-profile person managing a very big entity, but she is down to earth, highly educated, or well positioned somebody, elderly person, you know, with all the knowledge and intelligence, but she is that kind of person. Now, sometimes when a man comes, in fact, I'll give you an example of, uh, of one MP we are debating somewhere. I think uh, uh, some people might also have uh, come across this kind of type. He, he messed up on the road and he was driving uh, in, a, in a wrong way. Then this traffic officer stops him, the traffic warden. And the man was, uh, do you know who I am? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a member parliament. Don't joke with me. You can lose your job. I appointed you. Do you know? And you know, that can hardly be found in women. Most women are calm and humble. And the, the fact is because they are mothers of us, mothers of nation. So they have that potential to calm down and think like mothers because they are educators. And quite a number of women, if you are to talk about them, and the greatness of women that we appreciate and cherish is too high. I want to give you an example. There are women who have been on ground and they have done a lot of work and have potentially improved this country and have showed quite great guidance into the, into the right direction for this country. And if you see, in fact, if you roll back at the times when, uh, when, he, when AIDS hit this country, uh, 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 our mom, the, the first lady, the mother of this land, Mama Janet, she came up with Ueso. Ueso did a lot of work in giving hope to families, more so the, the children who are left her place and the sick mothers. You know, it did a lot. So uplifting was quite important. Uh, giving hope, showing a new direction in life. It was what most of the people in this nation needed to overcome and cross over. Because people who were there then at that time could remember the seriousness of the, 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 that the, the AIDS caused in this land. It was very tough and we really needed a great kind of arrangement to build the hopes back in the people so that we could find new direction in life. So, great potential still in women. We'll be analyzing more. So you, 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 you want to speak to men mm. so that they, they learn to be strategic, exactly. slow in exactly. some matters, though very intentional. Exactly. Because you want to think uh, one of the reasons why they, they are not uh, very much uh, fruitful in some of the things is that they are very hungry to achieve so fast. <laughs> and before you notice, they crash. Yeah. in the process mm -mm. of hurrying up. Yeah. Uh, so, so particularly from the, from the women. Some men are very good people, but they are also very dangerous because they work as much as possible to suppress, to spoil, to destroy uh, the potential that women have. And so we want to look at that bit in this uh, next segment of, uh, of Let's Talk, and that's what we'll be discussing. Why are men making attempts to destroy certain potentials in women. Why are men sometimes, some men, not all? Engineer? Yes. Um, well, Yasuma, mm. She has a document, she, mm. has a, she, she gets a job, mm. and before you notice the guy is like, you are meant to be in the kitchen. Um, Emmanuel, before even you get there, some of these scenarios need um, a proper analysis. Uh, because uh, we've seen situations where almost everybody is up to work. And then uh, uh, you find the children, these little toddlers which are coming up, they are kind of left out. And uh, there's nobody 
to take care, to, to make sure that they are groomed into a right direction because the mother has to work and the father has to work and probably maybe they, they are in the hands of one maid after the other and, and then TV and what. Partly in some families, we have that, those challenges, but it needs uh, a concerted effort for the two to sit down and do a right direction into that. So you cannot just wake up and say, don't work because much as you have the papers, I think that, that is primitivity and backwardness. But only if the scenario of that type uh, needs um, proper mending and looking at the rightful direction on how you can help these children to grow well. However, my only challenge with these men you are talking about, they have not discovered the potential in women. And the, I wanted to, to look at the greatness of these women and what they can do if they are given their role right starting from a girl child as they grow. Uh, we've seen men who are frustrating uh, women's efforts into the right direction. For example, a young lady um, gets into the university, finishes her studies, she scores well, a job is advertised, she goes for interview, and she passes the interview. But this man whom I think is a frustrating kind of character will take the girl down and say, well, papers are good, everything is fine, you, but now until the skirt is down, there's no way you, you are going to get this job. To me, that's the most painful bit. There are those who have gotten in placements and areas of, of work, and they are harassed sexually by these men. Some of them even, is, uh, we've, we've had them from institutions of learning, where some professors have been a problem. But of course, we thank the educational sector and system, and the prominent women who have stood the ground to fight this. And I want to tell you, to me, recognizing the greatness of uh, these women in a very addition to society is quite important. That's why you saw, I was, I, at first I, I made mention of the first lady. She has done quite a, a number of things into uh, the right direction. You get to the Navagereka of Uganda. She has done quite a number of things to build children and a girl child. And so many women have done that to a girl child. Lady Justice Julia Sabotinde. I, th I think you remember that lady, yeah, Justice. She's also tried to do a very great work lobbying for women. Um, we can't forget um, Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. She stood firm for a women and girl child, shaping them into the right direction. It was quite important. Uh, you get to, uh, of course, we have the current Speaker of Parliament. She's also struggling, uh, uh, Madame Manita Mong, to see things in the right direction. We have the, 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 the Human Rights Commission. Uh, led by, it was led by uh, Madame uh, Margaret Sekaja. She did a very wonderful job for, for the rights of women. Don't, don't mm -hmm. forget the, the current, uh, 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 this, the, the head of, of, of judiciary is called who? The head of judiciary? Um, the chief justice. The of, chief uh, justice of, of the Republic of Kenya. Oh, no, I, I'll come to that. I'll come to that, please. I'll come to that. <laughs> no, but uh, and she's... She is doing, maybe I'll come to that, uh, Emmanuel, I'll come to that. I can't forget the role of um, uh, Mama Miriam Matembe. Uh, that, that, that you know that sometimes they used to call her Iron Lady. Mm. There is another lady called uh, Mama Cecilia Ogual. All these are women. They have stood on the right ground. Whenever they are looking at a matter in the right direction, they firmly stand and give it a shape and direction. They don't compromise. And you know, they, they are married women. They, they are in their homes, but they do a very wonderful work. I, I made mention of, uh, in the education sector, um, Madam Professor Mary, uh, Mary Okakwal, uh, the, the ED, National Council for Higher Education. She's doing a lot of work. Now we are seeing women getting into rightful positions in education. Currently, the Vice Chancellor of Ndeji University, Professor Olivia Nasaka Banja, She's a woman. Uh, Motesa, I mean, um, the, 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 this university, uh, St. Rollins, has just appointed the, Her Excellency Jess Karupo to become the chancellor of the university. And uh, there's another nurse I have to remember. The, the name was to me. But there's this nurse in, in Imbali who climbed the, 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 the ladder to go and take care of the community and provide uh, medical care. Immunizing. And very strong woman. She's doing a very great work in society. And uh, of course, we have other women. Uh, of course, uh, my wife not forgetting her. She has just done a great job to make me who I am and our family as, as I stand today. Mm -hmm. But uh, on that note, Emma and, the, and viewers, I want to end with the greatest, uh, the, the very great woman. I can't forget. And uh, that's my own mother, Mom Aida Nampera. She's my mother. 
I call her the best mom in the world. But would you have any other? You, you only have uh, one mother and that is all you can have. And she's the best in the world. That, she's the best to you. Exactly. Any other. You made mention it. Uh, you made you mention have, of it. Would you have any now, other apart from... <laughs> these great women, I do celebrate them. I have all reasons to celebrate these great women. They have done a lot. They have offered a lot to their families, societies, and building communities. Because whenever they could take a, a ground to stand on something, they do it right. Well, they are women. You made mention of uh, also some. They, they are those who are challenged as well. Because you, when we are entering the program, you made mention of some women who went into the Karamoja. That's the wrong character, and it's a disappointment to, to some of the women. But it's a challenge that can be mended at some level. And the uh, Right now, you've made a mention of uh, the, the Chief Justice of Kenya. Uh, of course, she's also maybe doing a, a job, but uh, I hardly recognize the big job she's doing. Uh, you remember the, the Tamil which came around when it was election time. She had a lot of issues, and uh, she went out of that. Currently, if I may quote well, I think she's, she's in the mix of uh, signing this CL or give you whatever bill, you know? leading kind of that kind of thing so some women are disappointment but uh, quite a number of women are doing a great thing and uh, there are also some women we see on the globe who are doing a very a very wonderful job when you get a family level i remember the, the lady um, uh, madame the the, the the former chancellor of german madame angel Merkel. she was a very great lady a leader of a country germany as the whole of it but I remember, she make, I remember her making a statement. She said, yes, I'm a president of this great land, uh, German. But uh, I'm a married woman. I have a husband to take care of. I have a husband to cook for. I, has a, I have a husband to wash for. So this office thing are done. I'm moving home to take care of my husband. Which is very rare of women. So I want to call upon women who have been placed in positions and whom God has uplifted to make sure that the family unit stands on them. No matter how big you, you, you can be in society and what, in office or what, but the beginning point is the family. You can do everything and you scatter yourself all over the world and you, you are celebrated all over the world. But when all is done, your destination is your family. You get back to family. That's where you find your peace. That's where you find your retirement. That's the place to be. And if you've not given your family a chance, and you say, since I'm big and I'm celebrated, I'm a diplomat, so please don't tell me the nonsense about the family. At one time when all is done, you'll have to roll back to the family. But what family are you going to find? A scattered family? A family where you're not welcome? An isolated husband? A husband who just puts his head and say, God, I don't know what happened to me? Or a husband who will welcome you with open hands and celebrate the journey you've taken. Or a husband who prays for you as you take on this journey. Some women are tough as we could call them. But when I see Mama Miriam Atemba and the husband, she's tough in her way. But when she gets home, she's, a, you know, she's that mother. She has a mother's hand and heart. She's that wife at home. So those are women we're talking about. I remember one man making a statement, uh, the, the husband of Betty Namboze, the MP from Mukono Municipality. He said, uh, <laughs> people think Betty is, but Betty, this is, Betty is, is my wife. She's a different Betty home. She's a really great woman home. She's not the, the Betty Namboze who is a politician. <laughs> they are totally different from uh, Betty, the wife. So women, we employ them and we encourage them to make sure that the first calling onto their life must be kept in the right direction, must be cherished, and they shouldn't forget the role that God placed onto their shoulders because they are the pillars. Much as the man is the, is the chief priest in the home, is the head, but the women are the neck. And it's the neck that turns the head. So if the neck is stiff, the head might not find the right direction. But the neck must be <laughs> very available to turn the head so that the family will move into the right direction. But some women, there is a way they do things which really makes everything, you know, unthinkable. People want to think to state. In fact, even when you see um, the development of uh, this uh, funny behavior, uh, homosexuality and all that, the, the problem 
partly started from this unity in these settings, whereby those promoters, they thought that uh, if men think marrying and being with a woman is problematic, then we can be ourselves. There's that thinking. Also, women thought that if men are troublesome, I can be with the, my fellow woman and life will be okay. And it started getting to that behavior. And the, some people start saying, oh, but marrying is bad. Women, women are unbearable. And the men also, it's very tough. It's not about that. It's about how you characterize you are and how you perceive situations around you. Because you cannot change the godly order into a disorder. It cannot, it cannot work. It can never happen. Even women, after failing this marriage, or a man failing this marriage, you will find him struggling around looking for another man of marriage. In fact, um, I, I remember having read somewhere that even these people who want to leave themselves alone, like a man, a woman, 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 and man, man, they sometimes struggle to find men or to find women. How? These women who are a woman and a woman, they go ahead and procure sexual, sexually look like objectives. <laughs> Things, objectives that look like a man. And uh, they use them. Now, if a man is that bad and you don't need a man, you marry a woman. Why do you need the object, a man-like object? Meaning, in actual sense, you need a man. These men who are in that kind of category, sometimes they sneak around and also cross in with women. Meaning, the godly values and the godly order is the greatest than anything else. However, these whites have try to cook us around and imagine that they can change the order because today I'm even hearing people start asking, is God a man, a woman, that kind of thing, which is madness. But of course, in their thinking, technology and creation, they thought they can change order and things. I want to give you an example. They have put in place robots. A robot can come here, it assembles everything, run a computer, open door, drive, do everything, clean the place. Yes, it can. But uh, a robot which is there, is merely made. You cannot say I've made a male and a female robot, tomorrow I'll find them after nine months or so, when they have produced two other robots. No, you'll just have to make them. That's uh, the bottom line. I, I, I think that the point we needed to, this would be helpful to somebody out there. Yes. You gave an insight on uh, the MP of Mukono. Yes. Uh, Madam Betty Namboze. Betty Namboze. Mm. And then you made mention of uh, Mama Miriam Matembe. Miriam Matembe. Mm. Angela Merkel of Germany. There, there is another uh, who is serious with her family. Mm. Mama Cecilia Ogwal. Yes. Mama now, Cecilia Ogwal. These, these are women who have the money. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have the money. And the status. And they have the status. They mm. have the name. Yes. But in spite of the fact that they have the money, mm. they have the social status, mm. when they get home, mm. they are a wife yes. to some dude. Exactly. They are a mother mm. to some guys. Yes. Speak to the slay queens we have in Uganda <laughs> and also in Kampala today and put some sense in their heads and let them know that having money does not change you. Uh, thank you, Manuel. But that's the thing I, I really uh, pointed out earlier on. That uh, being great in anywhere where you can go means nothing. You'll have to get back to a family where you belong. And it's the same as having money. Because money cannot be everything as they tend to think. Um, I'll, I'll implore them and call upon them to emulate the values in these great women. Because these great women... Their lives are examples and they are mentors. They can borrow a leaf and be mentored by these women. There's another woman who is my good friend and uh, she works with UN. She's called Dr. Victoria um, Kanoe. She's uh, moving everywhere. She's work she works with UN, really engaged, but she's a great mother. 
She is a great mother and she takes very in her children and her husband. And let me tell you, because she's that great woman, children are built and the values that are inculcated in them, they live with them, no matter the circumstances. I'll give you an example. This very family I'm talking about, when COVID-19 came, um, the mother was in, uh, by then she was working in, uh, is it in, in Switzerland? And the husband was in South Africa. It was a lecturer in South African University. The children were here. And they were studying at Gayaza. Others at Seta High. Because we all have the same family of my children. And it, it so happened that when the world got locked down, the children were home. Locked home. The mother is in a different country. And the father is also in a different country. But the children were home. And these children, apart from communication, God kept them and they moved with a character inculcated in them. And they never bothered themselves with any wrong behavior. And God kept them. After the world was opened, the parents came back and found their children home. Safe, intact, and doing well. And these children, they are down to earth. They are humble children. The daughters are big daughters. Because they were, they were kind of finishing at Gaza High School, finishing high school. But they are good children. That means no matter where the world takes you and how big you are, the way you arrange your children will make a lot of impact in their lives. If you choose to be a slave queen and run around, I mean, that because there are women today who are slave queens in their marriages, <laughs> they, 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 are, they are slaying in marriage. Which cannot work. It cannot work at all. The moment a woman starts slaying in the marriage, you've lost it. You've gone astray. Not only you, but even those that God has put in your hands to take care, to guide, to groom. And mark you, the mothers will employ you and they want to reach out to you. That daughter in your hands, that daughter in your care, is not only your daughter, but you are grooming somebody's wife. You are grooming somebody's daughter-in-law. You are grooming somebody's mother tomorrow. Have you paid much attention to that? In the same spirit, we do request and reach out to your mothers. Put emphasis on the boy child. Much as you've done a lot, to shape and guide a girl child. The boy child having been left out. Is becoming a problem. A well organized child daughter. Is going to fall into the hands. Of a wrong boy. Or a wrong young man. Who is going to bring tears. Not only to her. But even to you. And to the entire universe. Even those that are going to come out of them. As children. They are going to cry. So mothers. Our children are all our children. The emphasis and ability to put on a girl child are quite needed equally into the life of a boy child. We are crying. We are having challenges. Why? Because we created a gap between a boy child and a girl child. You will ask me and tell me, but where are the men? Yes, the men are there. Some men have gone astray. Some men are available. But there's one true fact. That a child belongs to a mother a hundred percent, whether a boy, whether a girl. Why do I say this? In quite many instances, a child can easily change a father, but the mother is constant. We have seen DNA results which are showing that a boy, a girl who had been known to be for Chiboka by DNA results. That child belongs to Emmanuel. And Emmanuel will now be the new father. But the mother will remain constant. Therefore, a mother's role into a child's growth is quite important. And some of us, we are who we are. Because our mothers sacrificed it all. They put themselves down and offered it all to make sure that we grow into who we are. 
we cherish and celebrate those mothers. There are too many out there. We are still celebrating them. But in the same spirit, we are calling on those mothers who are slaying, who don't know the value of children, who have left the responsibility of child growth into the hands of uh, maids, technology, and the world to do change and know that these children are your inheritance. And the values that you pass on to them, the values that you inculcate in them, are the ones that are going to uphold you tomorrow when you are old, when you cannot stand, those children will be in to stand for you as a mother. In the same spirit, since we are talking about women, uh, on the women's day, let fathers open your ears Let me just and repeat listen. this for slay queens. Yes. Engineer Chiboka just said, please, if you still want to slay, fast slay, there is no slaying in marriage. True. So slay fast when you get tired of slaying, and then you can <laughs> become married. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, ladies out there, if you want to slay, slay fast. When you are done with the slaying, go for it, and then get married and become a wife and a mother of somebody else. True. Don't slay in marriage. Otherwise, no. you lose it out. Exactly. I, I want to say that women... We cherish you. We appreciate you. You are great mothers. You are great role models in our lives. We have made a mention of some women. There are too many out there we have not mentioned. But God sees the role that you undertake. I'm imagining an old woman or a struggling woman deep in the village who is struggling through all odds to make sure that the child goes to school, the child grows, buys a book, buys a pen, does everything to give hope into the life of the child. We might not see you. We might not be able to mention your name, but we pray for you. We cherish you. We appreciate your greatness. We appreciate the value you add onto the children that you're raising, either girl or boys. But most importantly, those you are raising, we don't know who they are going to be tomorrow to this nation. I do look back at what my mom did when she was struggling to make us be who we are. I never knew that maybe at one time I'll have a brick or two to add on the development of this nation. Therefore, you don't know who you, are, who you have in your hands. You don't know the destiny of that girl or of that boy under your care. Maybe you're grooming a president. Maybe you're grooming a minister. Maybe you are grooming a professor who is going to benefit this nation. Maybe you are grooming a judge of some sort. So please, let us stand. Give the opportunity to those children. Those who have done it, we cherish you. We appreciate you. We pray for you. And we do believe that pass on the knowledge and the wisdom. Pass on, the on to the guidance for those that are under your care. With the open hearts. With a clear guidance and values so that tomorrow you will be, you'll be replaced and we will celebrate you each and every day of your life. Celebrating you doesn't mean that only your children in your care will be the lead to celebrate you. But there are so many mothers who have been mothers to the world, who have been mothers to communities, who have been mothers to those they never gave birth to. That's the greatest mother that you want to celebrate because you've brought hope into the life of somebody else. Those who've gone astray, repent and find a new direction in your lives. We do believe that in oneness and together, we can develop this nation when the mothers have given us great hope to go forward. We thank you and appreciate you. May God bless you and give you the best of celebration into this Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Tomorrow is Women's Day. Don't just celebrate, but have a brick to add to a woman in your house, to that young girl child, so that they have something to remember about you in the future when they can stand and say, if it were not because of this, yes. I would not be who I am yeah. today. From us and the team, it's a good night. God bless you. God bless Uganda. Till we meet again next Tuesday. Enjoy the celebrations tomorrow.